Okay, so before we get too crazy with all this, uh, we've gone ahead and hooked up the VFD uh, just temporarily to the power cord, going up to what I believe is a thermal reset. Um, but uh, I'd like to get this thing spinning before I go to the trouble of redoing this entire board, putting this and rearranging the entire shop in order to fit it in here in a way that makes sense. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, hey, that worked. Okay, and then emergency stop. That seems to work. Ah. Success. Yes. Let's get to work. Let's redo this. So here's the board. Uh, the plan is hook this into the power line, run power to the VFD. VFD will come down, and then we need to split each one of these four wires into this. So we're going to use some of this excess cord here, some solder, some heat shrink wrap, and plumb all of these uh, motor contactors in. And then we'll need to make one more of these here. Uh, and our wires from the various machines we want to run are going to come up into here and then tie in to the motor contactors. We'll need a set of switches here that'll take 110 power from the wall AC, switch it on, uh, and each one of those switches will go to one of these uh, contactors and that will close the relay uh, and essentially turn on the switch. So that way I can run, use one VFD to run three different uh, uh, three-phase motors off of my 110 power supply. Alright, let's get to it. So then we take uh, our elect chickens tape. Yeah, probably didn't need that. Okay, so now the plan is to run, so the green one needs to get one into each of these. Um, the green is earth, right? But the beauty about three-phase motors is, is it doesn't matter which way really you attach any of these leads to any of the leads. Uh, if the motor's turning backwards, you take two of the leads and you flip them around and the motor will spin the opposite way. So, now we just need to put all these in place. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is reuse this portion uh, and cut it right here and reuse these switches to activate the 110 current that'll go to uh, each one of the coils to activate these uh, motor contacts. So yeah, we're gonna, I think we'll just cut her right there. Let's go ahead to the bandsaw and cut it. Oh. Right. No power. All right. Plan B.
Okay, so we got it mounted back up on the wall here. So power's coming in to here, up through here, and then these wires here. So we have our earth and uh, our two power wires. One of them goes into the switch. The switch then controls uh, when power gets sent uh, through this cord down and into the outlet. All of our all of these wires here come in and tie into the white wire here, uh, just through the outlet. And then we have our black wire, which is providing power, coming in, and that ties into the blue wire. And the blue wire comes out, down, and is run in series to all the coils. So this runs to that coil, this coil, and that coil. And these power wires go to the switches. The switches then come down and go to the other leg of each coil individually. Uh, that way I can control which one gets power, therefore which contactor closes. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And now we're just gonna button it up, turn the power back on, and see if we can light ourselves on fire. Okay, good news. I turned the power back on, and the breaker didn't blow, so I think we're going to be good to go. Alright, let's go ahead and hit the power. We should see this turn on, and none of these click. Alright, good. Now let's see if we can get uh, this motor contactor to close. Perfect. This one, middle one. Oh, that one's not. Something get loose. Oh, yep, there it is. Not sure if you can see back there. But the wire right there came off the terminal. Alright, well, that's easy fix. Okay, let's try again. Seems like everything's working. So we've got it. We've got it all set up here. We now need to see if the bandsaw and the drill press are turning in the correct direction. So let's do that. So we'll start by turning the power on. That should light up. Um, this is drill press, so we'll turn this on. All right. That means power is going to go to the drill press. Let's turn on the BFD. That is the wrong direction. All right, now switch over to bandsaw. Hit start. That looked like that was going the wrong way. So because both the drill press and the bandsaw are running in reverse. We're going to have to swap out any two of these three leads here and any two of these three leads. And then she'll spin the correct way. Okay, so we've gone ahead and corrected the spin. So let's try the bandsaw. Perfect. I keep tripping the uh, GFI plug. Keep tripping this GFI plug because, according to my electrical engineer friends, there's something about VFDs that ground fault interrupting circuits do not like. So, yeah. I'm gonna have to probably take off the braking feature of this. Because um, it seems, at least on the bandsaw, um, to cause issues. Alright, so we've gone ahead. Let's go ahead and trigger the uh, drill press. Let's start. There we go. And spinning in the right direction now. Just got a weird little hunka 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 going on over here. Must have been when I uh, was kind of manhandling the thing around. You want to come outside? Okay, so this is the old Delta.
drill press. It's a 16 and a half inch. It's the 2007 10-XL, so 10 years old. I bought this new uh, from, what was that, Lowe's? Yeah, I bought it new from Lowe's, and been a great little drill press. Uh, no real complaints other than the the table, I can never quite get it perfectly normal to to the to the chuck. It was really annoying. And manipulating this going up and down, I don't know, I felt a little wonky. I mean, it works just fine. It goes up and down, no problem. Uh, but to manipulate and clamp it into place, it had this kind of... I don't know. I didn't. I didn't really like it. You had to really tighten it down, and then things moved around on you. Had great pivots though. Like you could rotate it this way and pivot it this way. The problem is just I <laughs> I can I could never quite get it the way I wanted it, and none of my holes were uh, were normal to this plane. But other than that, it's been a great little drill press. Love it. Reason I'm upgrading. Well, I don't know if this is an upgrade or not. This is a 17 inch Delta Rockwell. Um, I left the <laughs> I left the handles at work. They they I unscrewed them for transportation. So the main reason I'm I went ahead and went through all the effort of doing this because this is 110 volts. This is 223 phase, which means as you've just I have to go. I had to rewire all this. I'll yeah, so the main reason I, I swapped is I I like this table much better. Like when they were when they were showing it to me at work, I was like, I don't know, and then but yeah, the the mechanism for raising and lowering it much easier to get to and then if I want to lock the table locked. Unlock the table. Lower it down. So yeah, the mechanism to raise and lower this thing so much easier and now she's locked and this table is much more substantial she does have a few more years on her uh, the second reason well another reason is it's got this really nice um, 1 32nd to half inch Albrecht chuck in it real smooth keyless just just a nice bit of uh, Kit, I suppose. The uh, this mechanism here uh, is how you adjust uh, the depth stop. Seems much more accurate than this mechanism here, which was just this uh, kind of a set screw. So you'd bring her down, rotate it, set it in place, and then you you weren't able to go past that little bit there. I I found that this one would slip occasionally, and I because I you know you're pushing down, pushing down, and the amount of friction you could put uh, between this and the internal uh, shaft, you just couldn't get enough friction. So yeah. At any rate, good uh, good starter drill press. I think she's going to go up for sale here shortly. So yeah, let's uh, let's hear her run. So to get this to work on 110 household current, we have 110 coming in here into this box. We have a main power switch. Off of this main power switch, we have a power cord that goes to the VFD. So we'll turn it on. That supplies 110 single phase uh, to the VFD. It then outputs three phase, and I've gone ahead and soldered. Uh, a three-way split to all four leads. So you have one, two, three leads, and then earth for all of these. And these are motor contactors. Um, and then we have switches here that will supply 110 volts AC single phase to the coils on these. So so yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty simple, straightforward. But let's let's activate the drill press, and then uh, I gotta do a better system than this hitting the green button to make it go. But so yeah, it's drawing 2.35 amps. Eh, not running too bad.
Yeah. So that's how you do it. And then if we want to run the bandsaw, we just click on the bandsaw one, hit start. All right, so that uh, turns off the bandsaw. And then uh, we also have it running this jointer here. This is a uh, jointer planer combo. It's a, what is it, a Meyer from Australia? I don't know, it's like an Emco something or other. Um, it originally came with a 220 single phase, but I don't have 220 out in the shop. So I went ahead and got a three phase 220 motor and I hooked it up to the VFD. So if I need to run that, I just come back here and uh, I need to get these labeled because right now it's kind of like, okay, which one goes where? And then. Yeah, and that's it. Simple. So, we are now running three machines off of one VFD using some cheap uh, motor contactors and some parts I had lying around. Uh, so we can control this machine, this machine, and this machine. And since it's only me out here in the shop, I can't do all three at the same time. So it's, it's, uh, it's a very slight inconvenience. I can also move these uh, closer along with a remote um, is inside of here. There are various inputs here. Uh, that, to where I could install a switch and a jog button or something uh, further away. But, um, yeah, that way I can uh, have a kill switch closer to the machine. But for now, this will work. And then uh, when you're all said and done, you hit that. It'll automatically disengage the contactors down here because there's no power up here. Yeah, so that's the system. But I, I hope it's all self-explanatory. If not, shoot me a question down below.